Hello and welcome to Trading with Technical Indicators. My name is James Boyd and the chat with me is Connie Hill. We welcome her and we welcome all of you here today. Uh, let's go ahead and kick it off. I went to my wardrobe today in the back of my truck. <laughs> and uh, where those uh, dry clean, clean clothes were still hanging out, I thought to myself, green shirt or red shirt? And you know which one I picked. All right, a little fun there. I uh, was thinking about wearing red, but uh, yeah, went with green. So just for quick, as we get started here today, remember the information here is provided for general informational purposes only. Not considered an re individualized recommendation of a particular security chart pattern or investment strategy. Now, in our examples here today, some will be stock trades, some will be option trades, okay? Options, remember, carry a high level risk, not suitable for all investors. When we talk about examples, they will be done in the paper money software application known as the desktop version. Uh, and also remember that investing involves risk, including loss of principal. Okay. Now, by the way, go back and watch that train trading class from last Thursday. We had a pretty good discussion on kind of risk and uh, taking risk. Make sure you watch that class from last Thursday. Now, uh, today, what I want to talk about, last week, we really talked about bounces. Okay. This week, I want to talk about, uh, uh, we talked about breakouts last week. This week, excuse me, I want to talk about bounces. Okay, now normally as we get started here, we talk about markets and sectors to begin with. And what I want to do is I want to kind of give you a list with the scripts that we normally talk about. And I want you to tell me what you see. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is imagine that there's some, someone, hypothetically not me, that had quite a bit of experience. And they were trying to download what they know in their mind into your mind. And that's the game we're going to play right now. So what we want to do here is, and thank you for letting me know about the, the audio. And uh, Jax was not chewing on the cord, but that was funny. I saw that. Now, so I got a list of the indexes here, okay? And what I want you to do, we want to play a little game called Tell Me What You See, okay? Now, in this list, we have the dollar. We have the 10-year rate. We, we have also the, the Dow itself, NASDAQ, Russell, Semiconductor, and SPX, and VIX. Tell me what you see. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is imagine that there was someone besides me that really knew what they were doing, okay? And they were trying to help you see how they see the market and maybe what you should be identifying. So tell me what you see on this. What is standing out to you? Now, by the way, this is like an in-class quiz that we're going to grade together here. Okay, now Gary actually says a lot of green. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so first off, you know, when we look at this column right here, which we always said we like to look at this column first, we got trend three, okay, which is price above the 10 in the 30 period moving average, not near an area of resistance. You got uh, US dollar bullish. You got, for example, the 10-year rate that's still bullish. You got the Dow that's in trend three, NASDAQ is in trend three, Russell's in trend three, semiconductors, hello, Orlando, is trend three, and then you see this SPX in trend three. So remember, if you are in trend two, which is price above the 10, but not the 30, or you get price above the 10 and the 30, trend three, that is when you tend to say, James, I'm doing pretty well in some of these positions. Now, uh, something we don't see that is bad, uh, we see that the VIX, what is five? Well, five is the opposite of two, price falling down below the 10, but still above the 30. That's not bad to see the VIX dropping down a little bit. The investor would say, spank you very much, continue to drop down, and we hope it goes from five down to one, okay, where price is below both moving averages. So when we look at the indexes, there's some opportunities here. If we see trend two or three, in the indexes, that really tells us, that really tells us in this case, that the chances of us seeing bullish bounces or breakouts is really high, okay? Now, so first off, we talk about trend. Now, by the way, I need to ask you a question. Is the trend column helpful for you as far as your routine? If we look at the trend weekly column, is for some of you that do not trade daily, you look at weeks to months, having those two columns is it helpful. Is that an indicator to kind of tell us about trend and also sentiment and momentum in the marketplace? Let me know your thoughts. Now, I want to kind of now turn our attention over here to what we talked about last week, okay? The X here, the X here, and the X here. 
And so what do we do from last week, right? So anything the material from uh, what we learned last week? Well, we got a breakout in the dollar today. We got uh, the 10-year rate continuing yesterday breakout, the second uh, row there. Uh, breakout conti continuing yesterday breakout in the Dow. In the excuse me, the Dow. Today breakout on the Nasdaq. Today breakout on the Sox, and continuing yesterday breakout really on the SPX. So there's quite a bit to talk about. Now those bounces, excuse me, those breakouts can also relate to the call hold column. And you're seeing that call hold column also littered with green colors. Now, where's the movements coming from? So we know when we look at broad spectrum, we kind of see some bullishness here. But what about what areas of the marketplace? Okay. Well, if I brought up the sectors, you tell me now what areas we're seeing. Now, I won't kind of go back to the trend. I think we get that. Okay. The only thing that kind of stands out. So my question to you is, what sectors? You know, there are pockets of the markets that look stronger than the others. I want to point out real estate today going trend two. It's been a while. We saw real estate drop. Is real estate starting to turn back up? We see, for example, Staples, trend two, starting to turn back up. Okay, so not bad. But pretty much outside energy, all the other sectors in trend three, price above both moving averages. Okay. Are there any, for example, sectors that are showing breakouts here today? Well, continuing breakout for industrials and financials, those two. But the today breakout is really coming in technology, which we saw with semiconductors. Okay. Now, when we kind of go back to is are those breakout, breakouts obviously leading to ta hold or ka hold from what we talked about last week? The answer is yeah, it's littered all the way down here. Okay. Now here's the major point. It's not that, for example, does someone see it? Is uh, do they trade it? Okay, there's a 500 different indicators. Whatever, I don't know the exact number, but it really doesn't matter. The question is, does the investor understand the indicator and do they trade what they see? Okay, do they trade what they see? Now, what I want to do here is I want to kind of pull up something, okay? So today we talked about breakouts. And by the way, was that helpful for you to have those scripts from last week, okay? So when we look at the indexes and we look at the sectors, if we now pull up, let's say, what does this look like on, let's say, example, given the Dow Jones right here, we can see which ones are kind of hitting those breakouts and there's just a couple of them. Now, we want to jump into examples because there's quite a few examples here. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to, I want to talk about this cohold and what I would call foundational understanding. You need to understand what I'm going to talk about with these columns of call hold, which is close above the high of the low day. It's a bullish bounce. And the close higher gap. As I mentioned before, cohold and actually CHG were created by a gentleman named Kelly Allman. Okay and myself, historically before a hold and close higher gap, people would just call it a bullish bounce. Kelly and I just, we wanted to kind of clarify a little bit more, what does that really mean to be a bounce? So let's kind of get a breakdown in the material here. So first off, if we kind of said, is there like something that is a underpinning? Like we have to start at step one. The answer is yes. Step one is, price, P for price, is greater than the 10-day moving average. And it could be at the 10-day moving average, it could be a 10 EMA, it could be a 10-day haul. We'll take either, okay? You know us, if we're looking for a price above the 10-day EMA or 10-day haul, we'll take either, okay? When I'm talking about the 10-day moving average, I'm not normally talking about a simple moving average, okay? Now, this would be obviously trend two if you had that price above the 10 at the minimum, okay? When we get price above the 10 slash 30, this would be what we call that three, that trend three. So we don't really care about bounces, or at least in our examples, we don't normally look for bullish bounces. If the price is not at a minimum, 
above 10 or above the 1030. That is the foundational concept. So remember, if the price is below the 10, we wouldn't talk much about the bullish bounce. Price is below the 1030, wouldn't talk much about the bullish bounce, okay? So if you're looking and say, oh, I see a hold, and that hold, for example, is below the moving averages, we would say that's not really, we're looking for something that has stronger trend than that, okay? Now, if we take a look at these examples, what you're going to notice is the red can the red squares represent down days, okay? The green candles represent up days, and I think that should be pretty clear. Now, sometimes when we get a bullish bounce, we don't always get a bullish bounce, let's say, on one day. You might have, for example, where the day goes up, but, for example, it just doesn't go up and close above the high of the low day. So when we look at the low day, okay, so when we look at the low day, we're looking at the lowest, most recent red candles. We're asking ourselves, which one is the lowest, day one or day two? And the answer is day two is the lowest. So if, for example, we get day two is the lowest, we're looking for the price to close above that high of that day two candle. Okay, so that's a big, now, why did you come to that? It came from back testing, okay? And by the way, this could be applicable for daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts, quarterly charts, yearly charts, all of the above, okay? Different products even. It's, it's, non, it's not biased, okay? Now, the biggest thing is the first green candle, we actually see that that is CH. Now, that's not Connie Hill, okay? That's what we call close higher. That green candle from a candlestick perspective tends to be also what we call a piercing line, PL, okay? Not profit loss, but it tends to be like a piercing line. It's up quite a bit. It just doesn't close above that day too high. And the very next day, what you see is the stock price gaps higher than the previous day's close. Now, don't worry, it's, it does that. That's why I drew this before, because uh, this Microsoft program, at least for me, does that, okay? so. We see the very next morning the price gaps. And that's what we really call CHG. Okay. Now, so the question really becomes and I apologize about that, but hey, I'm running with what I got. Okay. So the question is does someone buy on the close higher day, the first green candle? Oh, they could. That's not how we're going to show it. We're going to look for the stock to gap up in the very next morning. Now, historically, they would make comments like, well, that's the first hour of the trading day is rookie hour. I don't know if you realize this, but the rookies have money too. And the rookies actually can do quite a bit of damage to the market, good and bad, okay? They could actually push it up or sell it off. I don't think we could really make that comment anymore, first hour is rookie hour, okay? Because those rookies have quite a bit of capital. Don't forget that. So... Now, I would say this might be more intermediate to advanced because some people, they don't like to buy in the morning, but some people, they don't mind to buy in the morning, okay? So let me kind of repeat. The close higher gap setup is an up day that does not close above the lowest red candle, okay? Above the high of the lowest red candle. The investor is waiting to see if in the very next morning, if it were to gap. Well, how would I know if it's going to gap up higher? You check the futures. What are the S&P futures doing? What are the Dow futures doing? What are the NASDAQ futures doing? Russell futures doing? What are those doing? If those are gapping up higher or, or up higher, it leads to a greater chance that the stock that you might be looking at could gap. You could also check the bid-ask spread, uh, where that is, and check that related to the last trade from the previous day in the pre-market. So not that really that bad. Now, so that's CHE. Now, CHE, for example, can be found right in that column right there, okay? If there was an example of a gap right in the morning, just like Kohold shows with a green background with the number one, we would see that there in the morning, in the first hour or 90 minutes. Now, this close higher gap is probably something you're more familiar with, okay? Price falls down, red candles. And then all of a sudden you see a green candle. And this one, for example, would be more what we would call like a bullish engulfing, B-E, okay? So B-E, sorry my computer flickers, okay? So if you take a look at this, that stands for bullish engulfing. 
and we're trading or closing above that day's high. Okay. Now, what you're going to notice is someone might trade that intraday or they might wait until the last 90 minutes of the market. Okay. Now, if, it, if it's showing that, well, that's what you're going to see on that column right there. Okay. So gaps, CHE, close higher gap, that's really your buying in the, in the morning. The first couple minutes, maybe up to 90 minutes in the marketplace, you're thinking, could that trend continue? The to hold is more intraday as well. And it also might be something where you say, James, I want to make sure it's closing in the last 90 minutes if you want to see it close there. Okay, or at least that you're thinking that it's going to close there. Now, I want to go to the last example before we spend all the time on trade examples. Okay. Now, if you are like most people, and we all are, James, I missed the entry. Okay. Now, that would be really sad. Okay. So, first off, if you had this column heading, and if you had that column heading too, and even if on the chart you had, uh, so we don't miss that, the little green dots on the chart, those are co-holds as well. That is showing you where co-hold is on the price graph. So if you're on a list, maybe you didn't see it. But if you pull up the chart, these little green dots are showing you where the co-holds were on the price graph. Okay? And if you see an upward trending stock, they should be littered all over that upward trend. Okay, so someone said, I didn't see it. That's what the green dots are there to kind of remind you of. Now, what I want to do is I want to kind of go back to, let's say we said, you know what? I don't know what I was doing. Okay, I don't know what I was doing. I just wasn't paying attention. Okay, and that would be really sad if that was someone here. Now, one and two. What do one and two represent? Well, those are your red candle days. What if you pull back for four days? It doesn't matter. What if you pull back for three days? It doesn't matter. Which one is the lowest? Okay. So when we look at the low days, we want to see the red candles. From there, which ones are the lowest? If day two is the lowest, perfect. We're going to put a little X right there. So what are we going to do with that information? Well, let's say the investor said, I did not get in on this first green candle day. I didn't, even though that was gold. And then even if you look at this, you had the second whole day, okay? And then what you see is you finally get a red candle. And we're now thinking, well, maybe is this the time to try to buy on a little price fluctuation? Now, we just did this on Thursday on futures, okay? We did it on futures. And what we actually saw was we said, hey, we, wonder, we saw prices fall down in the morning. And we said, maybe could we do like a BL? What is a BL? A buy limit order. Or we could actually say if we go at or above. Okay? So you can make the order one or the other. A, if we go at or below a certain price, which would be the middle of the most recent large green candle, or if we get above the high of the red candle. Okay? So it's gonna fill, now we talked about it on Thursday. Okay, you wanna verify that it fills at one or the other, okay? So here's the deal, that would be like a conditional order. Okay, so if you said, James, I missed those first one or two green candles or even three. Well, if you get an intraday morning where it's down, the investor might say, hey, I'm gonna put an order right at the middle of that green candle and kind of play both ways. Number one, if we get at or below a certain price or at or above a certain price. Remember, that's just a conditional order. And why do you do if it gets at or above as well? Well, so if it doesn't pull back really to the middle of that range and it shoots again to the upside, you also have that entry there as well, okay? Now, guys and gals, I'm gonna tell you something. If you ask most people, do you do at or below, at or above certain orders? If I was gonna guess how many people really do that, I'd say less than 15%. That's shocking, okay? Because this is kind of taking advantage of both. Number one, if the price dips, but then second, if the price doesn't dip and then the price goes up again, the investor is trying to have an order right above this day's high, okay? 
So I think this is a foundational thing we need to understand. And if someone just said, James, I, I'm really good at this, I think that could be something that could be beneficial. Okay. Now, are there any questions here? Now, Josh just said, never thought of doing the unconditional. Uh, so let me kind of show you something, and I can only take you so far on this, okay? So I'm going to right-click on this, go buy custom. I'm just going to do, let's say, with stop, okay? Now, what's going to happen is if I go limit market data GTC, okay? So if you said, James, I see a stock where it's gone down a little bit after I miss the the, the first initial entry, and I'm trying to buy in a slight pullback, and how do I do that? Well, if you go to market, GTC, and then you click on the gear, it's gonna give you a pop-up box. And it's you could type in, for example, if we go at or above, and then you could type in if we go at or below. Now, the idea is that it fills on one of them. We talked about on Thursday, it might fill on both of them. You need to verify, did it fill the way you thought? Confirm, okay? Now, so what you're now gonna see is, how, where do we find that again? Well, go to market, change it to GTC, go to the right-hand side, there's gonna be a gear, click on that. Be a pop-up window. And it's gonna say mark, uh, at or above, and you can type in the price. And you want it to be really if it gets at or above or at or below, okay? So that's critical. I think if we practice that one thing, that would be something really huge. Now let's look and see if we can't find some examples from this. So if someone said, hey, James, I'll be honest. I, didn't, I wasn't a finance major in college. I didn't study accounting. I don't have an MBA. I don't have a CPA, CFA. I don't have a CMT. I have none of that. But what are two things that are like super, 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 super important? And we would say you better have an understanding of what the breakouts are, how to find them, how to trade those. And then the second part of this is what are bounces? If someone said, I don't know any of that, uh, you know, that would be something that you probably want to polish up on. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, wouldn't be great. Uh, you better hope that the market goes up to drag your asset allocation to the upside. <laughs> okay, you better hope so. Now, yeah, it, it's don't even go there. It already froze up this morning. It, it doesn't like me. Now, what I want to do is I want to pull up some examples of this, okay? So a couple stocks, and we got 20 minutes here to do some trades, so don't worry, okay? So first off, if we pull up, let's say, a couple stocks in the Dow, that were noticeable here today, okay? We got UNH that is going into the earnings tomorrow that is right at the doorstep of a continuation pattern. You're also gonna notice that it also has a, it's also showing Kahold. That was the first day of Kahold because of the most recent down days, one, two, three. That's why the dot was there because that's the first day we closed above the high of the lowest day, which was the previous day. And then it gapped. And then it went down to the middle of the green candle. Oh my gosh, just like our example. And then guess what? Today, it went right down to the middle of the green candle. Okay? I'm just doing that because I want that, like, knock it into my head, so to say. I cannot tell you the number of times we'll see where this stock price will check back down to the previous day in the middle of the range of the candle. It did it there. It did it here. And patterns happen all the time. It doesn't mean that people expose them, okay? Now, a couple other stocks that kind of stood out here is Mickey D's, okay? Little turn to the upside and really quite interesting uh, move there. IBM we saw from before. I, uh, won't, uh, I won't bring it up, but keep an eye on that. But I want to go back to example given like V for Visa, okay? Now, by the way, it's twin cousin M.A., is showing that. That's that little continuation, right? So we could say, James, is it possible to have a bounce and a breakout at the same time? What's the answer to that question? Turn right again. If that bounce is that high, yes, it can lead to the breakout. Now, if we take a look at this, where did the stock open here today? Well, it opened here, but guess what it did? Intraday, it fell down to the moving average and someone just happened to buy right off it. 
So do not be afraid to practice buy limit orders at middles of large green candles or the previous day's green candle or buy limit orders within uh, cents or a percent of that moving average, the 10 period moving average. The example that I'm gonna look at is V, okay? Now, our first example here, let's kind of talk about this and let's kind of take this back. Now, last week we talked about WFC as far as the channel example, okay? That did not last very long. The paper money count is very sorry. It hopes to never do it again. And now what you're gonna notice is you just rammed its way to the top of the channel and then it poked to the upside. Now we're kind of wondering, okay, could V maybe do that? Could V swing its way to the upside, okay? So if I looked at this, we kind of said, hey, we had a channel. We, we kind of went down the middle of the channel and now we kind of went pokey pokey to the top of the channel. Now, what you're now gonna notice is this is kind of some information that we normally like to talk about anyway. Put it fill in the gap, okay? And also if it could try to break out and fill in the gap, could it go back up near that prior high, okay? So on the chart, we're seeing a breakout. On the chart, we're seeing the moving averages both green. On the chart, we're seeing close above the high of the low day. Now, here's the deal. You can have all the indicators you want. You can have all the charts you want. At the end of the day, you gotta have a little fortitude. You gotta have a little backbone. You gotta be comfortable with trading a certain amount of capital and willing to risk, okay? Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna pull up this uh, stock. So let's say, let's say we had the price at 280, okay? And I wanna take this discussion from last week, okay? So let's say we had an account size of uh, 69,250, which it's at right now. We're talking about the margin account. Let's say, for example, that we're willing to risk a half of a percent, okay? Which is pretty much what we've been doing. Half percent of 69,250 would be $346, okay? That's important. So remember, you can know all about indicators, but you will not probably have the fortitude to trade any of it unless you're comfortable with money management, position sizing, okay? Now, if we said, you know, James, out of these, for example, how many stock trades do you want to have out of that 69,000? Now, the investor said, you know, James, I'd like to have maybe perhaps 10 trades out of that 69,000 bucks, okay? Well, if we had, and we're talking about stock trades, okay? So you had 10 stock trades, each one being 6,900, 69,000, there it is. Okay, I want us to pay attention to that number. So first off, you gotta ask yourself the question, do you have a percentage of risk that you're willing to take? That's question number one. Type it in the chat, I wanna see it, okay? You don't write it down, it tells me you're not comfortable. I could show you any indicator probably you want, but the likelihood of you trading is not high because you don't do the position sizing. The other thing is we need to know how much per trade are we gonna put in? And so these are the things that we need to know, number one and two. If you cannot answer those questions, do not go past step two, okay? Now, let's look at the stock price. Let's ramp it up here, 280, 280, 27, okay. Where do we see support? Well, let's go back to chart, double check. Well, if I said, where do I see support? Let's say I see it kind of at the uh, 276.13. All right, here we go, 276.13. Okay, now let's say we said we're gonna set a stop 2% less than the support. Well, that would be at 270.61. So if we buy the stock at 280 and change, and we set a stop at 270.61, is everyone good that the potential risk is 966? Okay, now here's the deal. There's kind of a, something confusing here. Do we position size based upon the risk we can take, 346? Or do we position size based upon the capital per trade? Well, <laughs> whatever is smaller, okay? So if I'm just gonna do the position size uh, risk per trade, we could buy 36 shares. The problem is if you buy 36 shares of this stock, you're gonna be over the 6,900. Eh. 
denied. Okay, and you're now going to see that the position size and capital per trade is 25. So if we did, let's say, 25 shares of stock, okay, just to make sure we're all following along, and it's $280.70, you're going to see that it's right at, okay, matter of fact, you probably want to round down a hair. If we buy 25 shares of stock that the stock is at $280, it's 7000 bucks. It is right at the threshold. Do you understand that? So that's why this number is rounded, okay, to the nearest number. It's 24.7, okay? And that's why it was showing us that. So to safely do it, we'd go down to 24. Now, when I say safely, that doesn't mean there's no risk, okay? And now what I'm going to do is going to put on the target, okay? Now, if we do that, if I right-click on this, we're going to go, uh, let me bring this back up in that, there it is. Let me bring it back up there so we can put it in that paper money account. We're going to right click on that chart. We're going to buy custom with OCO bracket. Now, Wiley says smaller is better. Well, I mean, is it better? If you if you buy 35 shares of stock, okay, 35 shares of stock, okay, and the stock is at $280 per share, it's going to get you to $9,800. So what's the problem with that? Well, you said before that we're only going to put up to 10% example given. So you're now taking all the 6,900 and then adding more to get in. So it's buying too many shares. And so what does this lead you down? What path do you go down now? You go down that street called emotional lane. The position is bigger and all of a sudden the numbers become bigger up and down. And now you're kind of nervous about getting out, uh, especially if you have a loss, because now the loss is bigger than you normally have seen. It's because you all went, you bought too big of a position, okay? And now, well, you, you're, you're probably not going to exit because you don't want to take that loss. And who did that to you? Was it the market? No, you did it to yourself, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a target right at two. 91-ish, okay, 291-ish, dated GTC. And now what I'm gonna do on this, when we go back to the Visa exam, uh, where's that stop at? Uh, 270.61, okay? Now, if I go back to that 270.61, okay, dated GTC, okay? Now, when we go back to this, how many shares are we gonna do? Well, we did, we were doing 24 shares, okay? Now, if we did 24 shares, buy 24, target, and stop. Now, remember, just because something sells, maybe at a target or stop, verify that you do not have any position left and or any other order standing for that ticker, okay? We're going to go ahead and go confirm send. Read that line in red to confirm. And also, do those numbers match with what you type down here below, okay? All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and send that order, okay? And now we got that sitting there. Now, I want to kind of go also back to one other piece here, okay, which is, you know, why did we set the stop at where we did? Well, we were kind of looking at this recent down date, red candle, and kind of looking at this about right there. This was the pullback day. We're kind of drawing it from the open there, and you're going to see that we pretty much touched it again. We almost touched it there. We almost touched it there. We've had about four days or so sitting right around that 274, 275-ish area, okay? Now, I want to go to another one just real quick, okay? And the other one I want to kind of go back to for just a moment is GE. Now, by the way, if we look at GE, the IXI, so funny how that's, okay. IXI, there it is. It's so funny how paper money count shows this and this. Yeah, don't even, yeah, okay. I'm going to be positive, okay? I'm going to try to be positive, okay? If you look at the industrial sector, what you're now going to notice is that was a brand new high. So something in that area is going up, okay? Now, one of them that we're going to pull up is GE, okay? Now, when I pull up GE, here's what we actually see on the chart. Now, we got earnings coming up, noted like most things, okay? 
Now we could see the turn, right? Shorter term moving average goes green. We get a crossover and pretty much on that same day, you actually see, let's say the moving average, the 20 period moving average goes green as well and the cross. Now let's say that we did not see this day. We didn't see it. We were, we were on vacation, whatever, okay? And then by the way, can you even see this on your phone, like right on the mar on the quote list? The answer is yes, okay? And if we go for the very next day, there's our red candle. Now tell me where the red candle is. Where's the red candle? Why is that of interest? What does that have to do with the example drawings that we actually drew, the example number three? It's right at the middle of the green candle. We have to like stop, just stop thinking that if we miss that one entry, that it's over. Okay, it's not taps. If that trend is really going to move, there's going to be probably multiple entries in that trend. Okay, so we kind of have to get out of that like bad psychology juju. Oh, I missed it. Well, if you say that, you should say, where's the middle of the green candle? It's the very next day, okay? Now, by the way, if you have your head down, you can't see it, right? You feel like garbage. I always missed it. I'm always a loser investor, and I can't see it. Well, you can't see if your head's down. You go right back to the fundamentals, and the fundamentals says you get these big green candles. A lot of time it checks back to the middle of these green candles. There it is. And remember what we said, we could do a buy limit. It probably would have filled. We could also say, look, if we go back to the middle of the green candle and or if it takes out the high of that lowest, most recent red candle. Now, here's the other deal. If you get the price above the 10-day moving average, those pullbacks tend to be less than three days. So if it only pulls back for one or two days and then bang again to the upside, that's not unusual. It's not unusual. Okay, momentum. Now, what you're going to see is, again, there it is. Now, if we go forward to, and, and we what well, we see, again. And what you're gonna notice is, notice the gap, okay? And then a little price rally on top of that. Okay, now, let's kind of take a look at this, okay? Uh, now, we might also bring up one other point that we like to is, well, how high is too high, okay? How high is too high? Well, if we had that 10-day exponential moving average, that blue line right there, the yellow line is just measuring. Let's get the tape measure out and say, how high is that? Well, the yellow line is 3% above the 10-day exponential moving average. So if, we could, if the investor could get an entry inside this range, like that's, that's as good as it gets, okay? If the investor says, James, I got an entry, where the price is above the 10 day moving average and it's not above the yellow line, that means that it hasn't gone up that much yet. So the yellow line is 3% above the 10 day moving average. The red line is 5% above the 10 day moving average. And the white line, 7% above the 10 day moving average. So if the investor said, James, I got an entry above the 10, but it wasn't above the yellow line. That, that, you know, they're taking less risk, okay? And they're seeing if it's gonna bounce. That doesn't guarantee it's gonna go up, okay? But if they're buying now above the yellow line and maybe on the way between three to five, it's a little bit more elevated. And if they buy between the 5% line and the 7% line, it's even more elevated. And it leads you to kind of believe that maybe that entry is mistimed, okay? Now, by the way, I think if you had the cold script, you had the CHE script, you had the whole moving averages where it shows the color lines changing and the moving average cross script, and you had the blasted coal dots all over the chart. I, I, I think we could probably all kind of come to the analysis. And by the way, if you're just looking at the Dow stocks, NASDAQ 100, SB 100, the 200 stocks, I think you could simplify things and probably potentially miss less. Okay. So don't, I, I would say it probably will be a good thing. Maybe, don't look at as many stocks, focus on some list, okay? Now, what I wanna do uh, is I wanna send this, okay? Let me send this just real quick and I'll also put it in uh, the description for the video, okay? 
So I want to kind of go back to something. Let's go back to, so let's say, okay, well, we see it. And let's say we decide we're going to do a trade example on it. But now I just really don't know uh, uh, how much are we going to invest. Well, we go back to the basics. So if we go back to kind of a little, okay, here's the account value. We're going to risk a half of 1%, 1 1.00 is 1%, 0 0.5. It's not 5%. Okay, it's a half of 1%. And if we said, okay, so this is not changing. Okay, now if our balance changes, the, that, that number is gonna change. Now what's the stock price, okay? The stock price is 192.9, what is that? 192.9, okay, fine. Where do you see support? Well, okay, let's go back, take a look. Where do we see support? I think there's been pretty good support level, probably right around 186.50 or so, okay? One, whoop. 186.50, okay? 186.50. Now, by the way, the comment was from Jay Rich who said, if entry is too high, don't chase, look for the next opportunity. That's true. It should also tell you that if, if you have a stock in that sector, maybe whatever stock it is, it could be Caterpillar, it could be uh, any of these industrial stocks. If one of them is too high, it probably tells us that there's some other stock in that group that's probably not. Go look in the neighborhood. So now if we set the stop less 2% of support, potential risk, $10. Why potential? Well, because if it goes lower, the, the stop is the trigger to sell. It doesn't tell us what it actually sold for. That's why we said the potential risk per share. Okay, you like that? Okay, good. Now, I, I think, you know, we always want to kind of say, just really emphasize risk, okay? So now, the amount of capital is important. Setting a stop is also important. We're trying to put some things on our side that would help if the loss were to occur, which they are going to occur, that we try to do damage control. Okay, we think that's important. Okay, now when we look at the difference, say, well, which one do I do? Well, there's not much of a difference in this example. It's going to be 34 shares. So when you come back and do this, 30 plus 34, okay, sell 34. Now, we're going to go day to GTC. Does every trade have to have a stop on it? No, it doesn't. Okay. But now, is this correct? Well, it's not correct because you didn't put the stop on yet. And that stop is going to be at 182.77. Okay. Now, we got to wrap up here. Now, your homework assignment is to ask yourself the question Do you have the co hold script on the market watch? Do you have the CHG script on the market watch? Do you also have, for example, those that hold dots right on? And I'll share that as well in the chat. Okay. Now, so RK, that's for you, buddy. Now, so you're going to see that this has the whole moving averages, but it also has the dots as well. Okay. So I would like to use these four scripts: hold CHG. Uh, this chart and this chart to kind of really show us how far off the moving averages we are in terms of a support bounce. I think those would be four critical scripts, two that would be for charts, two that are actually for the market watch. And what I want you to do is I want you to practice trading those bounces. Now, does that mean that you can't trade the breakouts? No, you can trade both, okay? Practice those. Read what the order is in red there. We're going to go ahead and send the order. Okay. Send. That order is just sitting right there. So I gave, we talked about the two scripts on the mark watch. Also, two scripts also on the charts. Make sure you have both. I also want to make sure that when you talk about your own paper trading, that you have really a, a certain capital amount that you're comfortable with trading. Second, how much, what percent of that account are you willing to risk? Do not forget that, okay? Because remember, you can have all the indicators, but if you're not comfortable taking uh, risk, then it doesn't matter what indicator you're looking at. You're probably not comfortable to take the trade. Now, we're out of our time here today. I want to thank uh, Connie Hill for answering those questions in chat. Thank you for being a live bunch, okay? And I always love that, okay? I always love live. <laughs> and uh, we also have a next webcast coming up next with Michael Fairborn. So I want you to go out and actually make sure you have those four scripts and the position sizing and then practice. Come next week or post on my X any questions you have regarding those bounce setups. 
Now, with what we talked about, it was done for example, illustrative purposes only. And also remember when we talk about this, all investing has risk. And we talked about that quite a bit. And we talked about kind of what are some things that can go wrong and try to how to, how to control that. So this has been the class on trading with technical indicators. Stay tuned for Michael Fairborn coming up next. Bye-bye.